Hey guys and gals, welcome to Practice T. Okay, getting very close to the final product, guys, and what we call in in engineering when we're developing a, a new product. the final prototype and you do get to the stage where you've got a final prototype but I guess it's a bit of an oxymoron when you say it's a prototype and you and you're you know tagging final onto it because prototype is usually precursor to to something to come but final prototypes are uh, you know are common in in general engineering and I've got some some products that that I call final protocols in my final prototypes in my putter design okay guys couple of things one thing just for people uh, somebody posted today and guys forgive me for not remembering who you are that post on the channel because you know, I get generally, you know, over and above what I get on my channel, just on my general teaching roster, guys, I get probably 120 emails a day, and I just get so many requests from people for different things, so, um, but somebody made uh, a point of, of saying, or asking about uh, me to clarify when I say, I'm hitting at the ball, and I think that might have confirmed you know, created a little confusion for some people in that they think that hitting at the ball is that in that the ball the club stops there that that's not it guys and that's not even remotely like it's intended to be in terms of an explanation it's not remotely like that momentum of the golf club once it's it's underway is never impeded it just keeps going the intention here is to hit at the golf ball and put that club on the golf ball but I don't certainly don't want to stop that momentum when it gets to the golf ball at all not in any manner or form I want to continue that momentum on out to infinity and to give people just a key on how to to create that ongoing or the after the ball uh, momentum of the golf club is to think there's a couple of things you can do one you can in your mind think I want to hit this ball twice in the one golf swing now how would you do that if you hit the ball there and then you wanted to hit it again about here you'd have to chase it wouldn't you you'd really have to chase the golf ball now that's a good thought think okay I want to hit that first ball and the second ball that's a really simple thought and it's a great way of brain trickery just get your brain to think that you want to catch the ball again you can't possibly do it but you want to think about that so I want to catch that ball again after it's gone a couple of feet now the other thing is Byron Nelson used to talk about it the great Byron Nelson he talked about the second golf ball he had a conventional golf swing and then he swung in front of his body from a forward ball position but what and Byron was renowned as being the most accurate hitter of his day and probably the most accurate hitter to ever play golf with the exception of Mo Norman but Byron Byron um, you know that famous uh, <laughs> famous line that was coined where Byron said he didn't like playing 36 hole matches which they did in the PGA in those days on the final day because he was playing out of his morning divots on the fairways that's how straight Byron was. He was unbelievably straight. Now, he said that he got the club staying on the ball, or what he thought on the ball a long time, by thinking about what he termed the second ball. He said he wanted to hit that ball. And by wanting to hit that ball, he really had to continue on through the original object ball. He really did have to continue on. So, so he's... He had a, well, he had a clear objective to hit that first ball, but he also had a clear objective to try and hit the second ball. 
Now they were interlaced, those two objectives. So, so he was trying to, to basically do, to do that. Hit both those golf balls. That's what he was trying to do. Now if you think about that in a golf swing, if you think about, I want to hit the second ball, it's a great thought and a very, very simple thought. But that one of trying to hit the ball a second time, out there, that'll help you. That really will help you. And it's simple guys, just, just think, okay, I'm going to hit this ball, I'm going to hit out there, I'm going to catch it again. Now in doing that, don't do this, <laughs> don't think I'm going to, really don't do this. Don't think um, I'm going to chase that second ball and do that, or do this, and hit the second ball and do that, and chase it out there. You'd never want to go forward. In the channel like Golf Swing, guys, and I might, might mention this while I'm on this here right now, in the channel like Golf Swing, we want to really, believe it or not, we never ever want to be going that way. If we're, if, if, if we're going to hit this ball here, we never ever want to be, the only thing going out there is the club head. And the arms being stretched out there. But we, and this being us here, the body, the body's moving this way. It's counterbalancing, it's moving this way while the hands are moving out that way. Now a couple of guys have said that they're getting, you know, hits behind the ball, thin shots, and shanks. <laughs> and shanks that way and this way. Now guys, you can't shank the ball that way unless you're profoundly over the top of the ball. And if you are getting a shank, and it's going that way, I mean, that's horrendous. But that can only happen this way, guys. That means that on the downswing, the upper body's moving out here. As, as we're coming in, we're moving out. We're going that way. We can't move that way, guys. We've got to move this way. This is a counterbalance. This mass goes this way to counterbalance that mass going that way. This is a counterbalance in golf swing. And you should have that in your golf swing generally, per se. It just in the general uh, channel log golf swing, you should have that counterbalancing effect. Now, I don't, I don't uh, uh, remind people of that as often as I should, but it's, it's absolutely vital, guys. The great secret of Mo Norman's golf swing was his counterbalancing. This is what we saw with Mo Norman. That's why he got that leg in there like that. That's where I want to be. I actually want to feel like that when I hit the ball. So, so in order to do that, the rump and the buttocks is going that way. And guys, the, the, by doing that, any time that you corral the hip, the trail hip, keeping it back here in the trail vertical axis here, pressuring down, whenever that hip is corralled very hard, you watch this, if I keep that hip back there, just think of this. If I keep this hip back here as the, as the arms are coming in here, look, I can't get this shoulder to go out here, you know why? Because the hip is corralling the midriff it's corralling this part of the body, which is a knock-on effect of corralling this. If I keep this back here, I can't get that over the line. It's not possible. So I haven't mentioned this before as an absolute directive of, of biomechanical application, but it's wonderful. It's almost like um, Craig, Craig Guthrie's, uh, uh, the, the Guthrie effect, where we want to keep the back of the, the scapula here facing the target as we hit it. But if in conjunction with that, if we keep this hip corralled here on the downswing here, there's no way that the shoulder can get out and over the line, guys. It can't do that. Now, that goes, that, that's contrary to anything we've ever been taught in the, in the conventional golf swing. Conventional golf swing, we're trying to drive off, that, off the lead side, the trail side follows it, and that hip gets out there. Now, whenever that hip gets out there, this gets out there, and that gets out there. So if you, if you, look, we're going, everything in, in channel lock is, is counterintuitive and it's, and it's counter uh, conventional teaching. Completely the opposite, diametrically opposite. So if you can just, as a, as a really good swing thought, or key, is just think, I want to keep my hip closed as I'm hitting the ball. How do I do that? I'm going to look like that. Look like that, because if you look like that, you'll be hitting the ball great. You'll absolutely be, as we say here in Australia, you'll be snotting it. 
absolutely snotting it. Rather gross terminology explanation, but it's used very widely here in Australia. Or as we say, Australia. Australia. For all you people in America or anywhere else in the world, if you want to see the real assault on English language, there's a book out called Let's Talk Strine. Strine, which, which is short for Strine. Strine. It's a book called Let's Talk Strine, and it's what Australians do to the English language and the way we join things up. It's a, it's a great book. Uh, I, used to, I used to actually use a lot of it in some lectures that I used to give years ago and it used to, the people used to love it. Particularly when you were addressing intellectuals and, and people who were grammatically correct and you would come up with some of the Australian uh, <laughs> slangs. So, um, yeah, here we are. Here. So, so we want to keep that, that, that trail hip back. Now by keeping that back, guys, what does that do? it drives the weight down into the trail heel, which is absolutely what we need to have happen in the golf swing. We need to be there. We need to have that weight driving into that back heel. And when I say I want it driving into the back here, I want it driving into the back part of the ankle, here. That's where I want it driving in there. Oh. Guys, I'm feeling a little bit poorly physically lately. I've just, haven't been eating well and I've just, just haven't felt like eating and I've just lost a fair bit of weight and I'm actually <laughs> I'm lighter now than I was you know like 30 years ago and uh, running at about 71 kilos at the moment guys which American weight that's not much 160 pounds 165 pounds not very much but I used to be um, 180 but I had a lot of muscle today I'm just an old bag of bones yeah so guys I'm uh, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a super dynamo at the moment, although I must say, in looking at my swing on the, uh, and I'm getting back in a really high, <laughs> high profile, high, high output um, training from tomorrow. I'm back really doing some heavy stuff from tomorrow on, so I'll get back a little bit of my physicality. But uh, I must say that looking at my swing on, on video, I've got a fair bit of zip in there, and I've got to tell you guys, the ball flight has got some zip in it, lots of zip in it. Amazing amount of zip in it right now. So let's just hit a couple of irons and uh, just gonna stay back and try and corral that hip a little bit. Now, now as with, with everything we do in channel lock, um, I don't know where I am on the camera here, I didn't put my marker down, but everything we do in channel lock, guys, we're trying to stay here, quiet body, so effectively, if you watch the, see how quiet this body is here? Now why can't we have it that quiet in a golf swing? You know why? Because we're programmed to not be quiet. We're programmed to have some, something like this going on all the time. We really are. You know, there's always this drive, there's dancing, there's this, you know, this explosive stuff from part of the body. But look at this. If, if, I, turn, if I turn back here, I can just do that. My body hasn't done anything. That's what I'm trying to establish in my golf swing and that's what I'm trying to produce in my golf swing. I'm trying to do precisely that. And when I do that guys, it's Thunder Rally. I mean I really do get this. And that drive back off that lead foot like, like the javelin thrower here, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to achieve. Maybe we just let that go down low. Oh, no, that's better. Just let it down, that pulls on the cord. That's better. That's better. Just fiddling with the audio every day, guys, to try and get a better audio quality. It's very hard here with the wind. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna really, quiet body. It's gonna feel like here, a little bit of Guthrie effect. Scapula here. Feel like we're hitting it like that. Actually, I want to feel like that. That's how I want to feel like I'm going to hit the ball. I mean, I mean that's that's an exaggeration example, but that's how I want to feel. See how I'm here? I'm back to the target. That's how I want to feel. You won't get that, but what you want to do is endeavour to feel that. And a lot of this, guys, is is a big feel, huge feel, 100% of feel and a 5% of effect. 
And that's all we need. We only need that 5% effect. Yeah, quiet body. Now guys, first shot of the day. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, a little, little bit of uh, little bit of rhythm, JH. Rhythm. A little bit more rhythm. Just the right foot's driving up a little bit. But that's not too bad when you're dead cold. That's not too bad. Shop was perfect. Okay, keep that trail foot down, James. Come on. Soggy knees. That's a pretty good job. That's a very good job. That's a good job. Come on. You can do better than that. That's how you can do it. That's how you can do it. Now, for, for the person that asked about the follow-through, I'm just really whipping my momentum out there as far as I can get it. I'm hitting at the ball, but I'm hitting at the ball with full momentum. That's, that's the swing. See, four shots, and I'm... Uh, all the other shots would have been on the green. No trouble, but that day were 95%, is this one, that one was 100%. Come on, Jake. Back here. And that's 110%, so that makes up for those other couple of 95ers. Okay, that's the same. Alright, now we'll apply maximum, maximum throw down. Quiet body. <laughs> it looks social play, doesn't it? Looks like someone's never played golf before. I heard some guys down here that didn't know me the other day. I was hitting some shots and um, one of the guys said to the other guy, I could hear him over there. He said, uh, who's that guy hitting the shots there? And he said, oh, he's one of, the, um, one of the instructors. And the guy was a bit of a smarty. He said, an instructor on, on what? He said, surely not the golf swing. He doesn't look like a golf teacher. And I can hear him say it. And um, anyway, when when I uh, they sat down over there, and then when I I hit about thirty shots, and when I finished, uh, I was just packing up my camera. And the because um, they weren't far away, they were just out of camera. They were just over there. Actually, they shouldn't have been there because I could hear them, and you could almost hear them on the on the audio. But the guy came over and said that. Uh, he was quite honest. He said, "Look, I made a couple of disparaging remarks about your golf swing. See, because you did, you know, I've never seen a golf swing like that." But he said, "After I saw the ball flight, he said, uh, I changed my mind." And uh, <laughs> and both he and his uh, buddy booked in for some lessons for next week. And I said, "Yeah, well, that's that's a good thing about it." I said, "If you're going to play some for for money and you're on the practice fairway, and they see you warm up with that golf swing, they'll put the bets up." Providing they don't see the ball fly. But guys, I can swing. I can swing just like anybody else in a norm, normal normal golf swing. There's a normal golf swing. Now that's a pretty good golf shot. But I can't rely on that golf shot because I know that sometime it's going to go over here. I just know it's going to go over here. So even though I can swing okay. Uh, I much prefer to have the <laughs> uh, the golf instructor uh, non-golf swing, looking golf swing. Perfect. Okay, now just got to get some better tempo and quieter body. The chop. The chop for, uh, for Craig Guthrie, the chop is 
too severe. Got to get it down to a soft chop. Soft chop, Jay. Come on. There's the soft chop. Wow. That's all it is, guys. The softer the chop, the uh, quieter the body can be. Soft chop, quiet body. There it is. Wow. I know that probably looks like a really ordinary looking golf swing from a golf instructor. You see that ball flight, you know it's golf instructor ball flight. That was really nice. Come on, James. Guys, you're going to hear it again. That's the best iron shot I've hit since I've been on Channel Island. And you know what that is? That's the that's actually feeling that on the downswing. I want to get over here. So over here, so I'm hitting away from myself. Felt like I went towards the complete opposite direction to the way you're taught to, to move in a golf swing. Complete opposite. And the more I can be complete opposite, the better I get. See, my process is the same, guys. Measure it out, get in here, back, 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 back cock, and hammer time. I've got the feet down now, guys. It feels great. Feet down all the time just feels sensation. The reason I had difficulty keeping my feet down when I was doing my enormous is because I was sliding forward. And I was doing that. I could do it, but it was really hard. Mo could do it because as Mo slid forward, this went this way. So he drove into that trail heel. He, he went like that. That's why I got the trail leg inside the lead leg. That was the dead giveaway. Okay, come on, give this a twist. Okay, I'm gonna flush this, guys. This is flush city. Okay, there's a revision coming. That other shot was the best shot since I've been on Channel Lock. That's the best shot since I've been on Channel Lock. Now, what happened there, that was a really hard power draw. About five or seven yards. That's because it just flexes the shaft so much. These soft shafts just give up when you hammer them like that. that. That's a lot more pressure on that ball than I normally ever put on the golf ball. And that really just, oh, beautiful shot. It just, I normally don't draw the ball very much, only a couple of yards. That was about five or seven. Look at this guy, look what I'm way back here. Wow. Looks like the old driving range first uh, day golfer, don't I? What do they do? They do that. That's what they do. But they rotate. If they did that and didn't rotate, they'd probably hit the ball right. They don't. They do that. You can't do that. You can. I'll do it. The ball will go so far left if I do that. Yeah, only 50 yards left. Only 50 yards left. That's the only thing wrong with the first uppers at the driving range. They rotate when they stay back. Come on, George. Okay, last shot. Give it a big twist. Okay, guys, just a couple of things today. I hope they will help.